Are you looking for the best video editing app for iPad right now? iPad video editing is getting better and better and there are now tons of awesome choices from free video editing apps through to advanced pro level options. But it can be a struggle to figure out which one is right for you. So I've tried a bunch to find the best iPad video editor for you in this complete breakdown. Let's begin with VN Video Editor. You can use this video editor for free and you can use it on iOS, Android or your Mac desktop. It's super easy and intuitive yet really powerful. I really like how much control it gives you over editing even for this more basic editing app. You can easily get really accurate results by checking it frame by frame. It's super easy to use has a ton of features and is really fun at the same time. I absolutely love how easy it is to switch between different project types. If you've got a widescreen video and you want to make it into an Instagram story, short or real, it's easy because they make the process so simple. And more recently, they've been adding a lot more effects in here too. It's rare these days, but the free app's actually pretty great. Upgrade to Pro only if you want extra templates, fonts, and more extra bells and whistles. The platform also provides more advanced project sharing features when you upgrade to Pro like encryption and increased project limits. But the cost to unlock that Pro level plan is around $7 per month or around 50 bucks for the year. So I think VN Video Editor is a great beginner right through to intermediate level editing tool. It's definitely not extreme in terms of the amount of effects it has, unlike some of the other apps I'm about to cover. It also doesn't have a massive focus yet on AI tools, unlike some of the options coming soon. But overall, it's still one of the best tools out there for people, regardless of your skill level. Next up is CapCut which is a lot like VN Video Editor in many ways. Just like VN, you can use CapCut on a whole bunch of devices, working on Macs, Windows, iPhones, and Android phones. There's also an online or cloud-based option, but it's pretty limited in features compared to the dedicated apps and programs. It's really similar to VN Video Editor in terms of interface, editing, and workflow. Until recently, it was tough to choose between VN and CapCut, but things have changed. Now they're not so similar, especially with features and pricing. The biggest thing that sets them apart is the effects and transitions. VN's effects are now outmatched by CapCut's advanced effects. Now, I don't use a ton of fancy effects on my videos or social media, so it really comes down to the type of videos you're making and what features you actually need. It's also important to remember that CapCut is banned or restricted in some regions. Since it's made by ByteDance, the same company behind TikTok, some governments have placed blanket bans or restrictions on the app. And some of those bans and restrictions have been on and then off, and it all gets a bit hard to be certain that the app is going to be available especially when you need an online connection to edit with CapCut. Now, while I don't think this is a deal breaker for most people yet, it definitely is if you live in a country where you can't access it. But beyond that, CapCut is still an awesome app with a ton of functionality, especially for those who love built-in effects and transitions, and lots of them. Now lately, CapCut has been hard selling its pro plan way more than before. Previously, a lot of those best effects and tools were free, but now many of them require a pro subscription. There is still a free version, but more and more of the premium features are now moving behind a paywall. That being said, the pricing is still yeah, reasonable for what you get. One month's access is about $10, a monthly subscription $7.99, and annual subscription, $74.99 per year. If you've been using CapCut for free, this change might feel frustrating. And if you're comparing it to VN Video Editor, where most of the features are still free, it really comes down to what you need in a video editor. If you're a beginner or intermediate user, CapCut is a great option for you. I'm glad they're adding more pro features, especially for color grading, but the biggest advantage of CapCut is for those who want those next level effects, transitions, and AI powered tools. It has all of those built in. My next three options are for more experienced users. Sure, beginners can use them, but they're not as easy to pick up as the first two. Let's talk about Final Cut Pro for iPad. Now, while there's obviously a lot of similarities to the desktop version, they've also re-engineered the way that you edit on the iPad to make it really friendly and easy to use. The overall interface of this is actually pretty intuitive considering that this is one of the more professional apps out there. It doesn't have as much of a difficult learning curve as say LumaFusion, which I'll talk about shortly, or even our final option. 
So while it is designed as a more professional tool, it's still gonna be easy enough for a beginner to jump in here and figure everything out too. So if you're someone who's coming from editing on Final Cut on the desktop and you're jumping into this, you're gonna be able to get up to speed pretty quickly. But it's also a little bit of rethinking in how you're actually editing as well. Now, personally, I don't find it all that intuitive or fun, but many people do love it. So my advice here is that if you want to make more videos is to try the apps until you find one that's fun and enjoyable for you. Because if you're doing something that's fun, you're gonna do more of it. Okay, back to the app, part of the way that they've re-engineered Final Cut on the iPad is that they've introduced more touch controls as well. Yes, it will still work with the Apple trackpad and the keyboard, so you've got access to those as well. And a lot of your shortcut keys and stuff like that will work. But they've also introduced this jog wheel concept and also moved a lot of the core functionality, the buttons and things that you're gonna be pressing a lot to the left and right side, which is what you're gonna be holding the iPad, like in that style. So this means that it's easy to navigate through your clips, quickly trim down your footage and make cuts without needing to move stuff around, all with just moving essentially your thumbs. Now on their website, they do state that this is the tool to help you record, edit, finish and deliver everything from your iPad. So it's no longer just a video editing tool. They've also integrated some more pro level camera functionality in there too. So you can think of this like the built in camera app on your iPhone or iPad, but with more pro level features, letting you lock things down and customize your settings and things. And with the clips that you're recording in there, they can drop straight into your editing timeline ready for you to edit. And I can see why they've done it. And I kind of like the workflow, but I don't think it's something I'll ever be really using very much. If I did want to shoot something actually on my iPad, I'd probably be using a more pro level tool just for that, something like Filmic Pro, and then use that footage in Final Cut to edit. But what I do love is the drawing support and functionality in here too. So if you're someone who wants to quickly annotate your footage or write something on the screen, or even explain something by drawing it out, and you've got the Apple Pencil, then Final Cut makes that really, really easy. And it's something that if you're doing any other way, it would take you so much longer and many more steps to complete. So it's pretty cool that you've got that built in here too. There's built-in multi-camera support here as well for the next two apps that I'll cover too. And again, they've made that really, really easy. Multi-camera editing back in the day used to be an absolute nightmare to sync everything up. So I love that Final Cut and both of the next apps have all this sorted and make it really, really easy to sync up your clips and switch between them to choose the different angles. Now, in terms of downsides or things to be aware of, hopefully there's stuff that they can change and fix over time here because it's still actually reasonably new. Let's talk about a color correction tools. There's a bunch of tools in there to help you to color grade and you can get some great results with it. But in terms of the functionality and the tools, it's not like you're finding it has a lot of common with other apps and tools that you may have used. These are just sliders that you can move around. There's no real color wheels or curves or things that you may be used to if you're used to editing on a desktop or a more professional kind of app. The other thing that you need to be aware of is that this won't work on a lot of older iPads. Essentially, it needs to be one of the M series chips iPads. Also, whilst it does have some cool built-in effects like automatic background removal and auto reframing, it's definitely not to the level of effects and AI tools and things like that that you can find in CapCut. Now there is integration between Final Cut on the iPad and on desktop as well, meaning that you can start your project on the iPad and finish it on your desktop. But at the time of filming this, we can't go back the other way. So I'm hoping that that's a feature that could be added in some point. It would be awesome to have a fluid workflow no matter which device you wanted to use or where you started your project. Now in terms of pricing, you can jump on a 30 day free trial if you've never used it before, but after that, it's a subscription. So you're paying around $5 a month or $49 per year to access Final Cut on iPad. So just rounding this out, I do think that this is a good all-rounder. It's gonna be suitable for a beginner to jump in because it's easy enough to use. It's not probably as intuitive as VN or CapCut, but it is a little bit easier to jump into and figure out stuff rather than say LumaFusion, but it does have a lot of pro level features, making it great for someone who is starting at beginner level right through to a more advanced user. 
Next up is LumaFusion, the original pro video editor for iPad. It's really powerful with tons of pro features you'd only find in expensive desktop software. Seriously, the control you get over your clips here is way better than in many other apps. Here are just some of the features that stand out for me. You can start your project in LumaFusion and transfer it over to your desktop or laptop. It even allows you to import your project into Final Cut Pro so you can continue editing or finalize your video on a desktop. LumaFusion also offers an amazing multicam feature too. While it requires an additional purchase, I really like how they've implemented it. It makes it seamless and easy to sync up multiple camera angles and edit multi-camera footage, and that includes syncing a master audio track too. You can change up the interface to maximize your screen real estate on the iPad. Since you're not working on a large desktop monitor, the ability to resize and rearrange elements makes your editing much more efficient and better on your eyes too. One of my favorite things about LumaFusion is the pricing model. Unlike many other video editing apps that require monthly subscriptions, LumaFusion is a one-time purchase of $29.99. Considering the pro features it offers, this is an incredibly affordable price. If you don't want another recurring subscription because let's face it, they do add up, then LumaFusion is a great option. Now I think LumaFusion is great for intermediate to advanced editors looking for more pro level features, creators who want desktop quality editing tools on an iPad, and it's also a great option for those who prefer that one-time purchase instead of a monthly subscription. LumaFusion is a solid choice. Check out my beginner's guide to editing with LumaFusion in the video description. The next option is DaVinci Resolve for iPad, which is undeniably the most professional video editing tool yet. In case you didn't know, DaVinci Resolve is a leading video editor for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And this is the real deal software used by TV and Hollywood movies for editing and color grading. It's a pretty powerful package, but this iPad version has a lot of similarities and things from the desktop version ported over. Now the desktop version is like a step-by-step -step video editor, each step on a different page within the app. From importing and cutting down your media to color grading, to adding motion graphics and effects, sound design and audio, right through to distribution and exporting. But what they've done on the iPad version right now is they've actually brought over two of those pages the cut page and also the color correction interface too. Now for those of you who are interested, there's actually a bunch of YouTube videos out there and we'll link some down below that will take you through how you can unlock all of those desktop pages and use a lot of that core functionality on your iPad too. Hopefully the iPad will get the full desktop features just as it comes soon. But even like this, it's actually really powerful. You have a lot of your core editing functionality that you can access and use on this cut page, making it a great thing to actually use on your iPad. This is literally pro grade tools that you can use to color grade, color correct your videos too. Now this also works with their cloud service, the Blackmagic Cloud. So you can transfer your projects to and from your computers. I mean, you could start a project on your iPad, finish it on your computer, or even go back the other way. Now while DaVinci Resolve for iPad is designed for these newer M series chips, the more powerful iPads, it actually does run on some of the older ones as well. There are some limitations in terms of resolution and depending on the device, you might be limited to 1080p, say instead of 4K, but it is awesome to see that this works on some of these older devices too. Now, in terms of pricing, there is a free version of DaVinci Resolve, just like there's a free version on the desktop that gives you access to a lot of the core functionality in there totally for free. So just on that fact alone, you've got access to a lot of pro level features here for free on your iPad as well. That's pretty amazing. But there's also the studio version, which is a one-time fee that you can use to unlock extra effects and more professional grade tools as well. And that's gonna set you back around about $95 as a one-time purchase. And lately there's a lot of AI tools added into the studio version. So watch out for those being added more as time goes on. So if you're someone who's looking for the most professional grade tools, again, on your iPad, then it's gonna be very hard for you to go past DaVinci Resolve, whether you're jumping on the free or the paid version. So what do I recommend when you add all of this up? Well, VN Video Editor is perfect if you're looking for something easy to use. CapCut's the best if you want lots of extra effects and AI features. But from there, it's a harder call with Final Cut, LumaFusion, and DaVinci Resolve. They're pretty different programs. Any of them will give you good results. It's all about your preferences and skills. Previously, LumaFusion would be the clear winner in these videos. It was the only game in town. 
It's amazing really considering all you get. It's currently the most complete, but DaVinci Resolve might change that if they open up those other features. For me, the most fun and easy one to use is still LumaFusion. It's definitely the app that I'm opening up when I most want to edit on my iPad. But if I need to do something specific like color grading, which isn't all that often, that's where DaVinci Resolve is an absolute no brainer. Now, if I was using DaVinci Resolve on desktop as well as thinking about how to use that on an iPad, well, that might make it a no brainer having that workflow right from desktop to iPad and vice versa. So those are my reckons. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Now that you're up to speed on iPad video editing apps, we've got some videos linked on screen to help you even further. There's also a link to my channel where I help you with the best camera gear and apps to record and share your life. And as always, check out the additional links and resources in the description box below, and I'll see you in the next one.